jump into uh, to part four uh, of this today. We'll conclude with healing miracles this morning. And so turn with me to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. We're going to read a scripture here. Acts chapter 3. We're going to read verses 1 through 10 real quick. The story of, uh, of when Jesus uh, used his, his, his disciples, Peter and John. Peter and John were out and used him to, to, uh, to, to heal a lame man. All right, so Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Just read this story with me real quick. It says this. It says, Now Peter and John were going up together to the temple at the hour of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. And a man who was lame from birth was carried there and placed every day at the temple gate called Beautiful, so he could beg from those entering the temple complex. When he saw Peter and John about to enter the temple, he asked for help. Peter, along with John, looked at him intently and said, look at us. Turn to somebody and say, look at us. So he turned to them, expecting to get something from them. But Peter said, I don't have silver or gold, but what I have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. So turn to somebody and say, get up and walk. All right. Then taking him by the right hand, he raised him up, and at once his feet and ankles became strong. So he jumped up, stood, and started to walk, and he entered the temple complex with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Come on, isn't that good? All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized that he was the one who used to sit and beg at the beautiful gate of the temple. So they were filled with awe and astonishment. At what God, at, excuse me, at what had happened to him. Amen? Come on, isn't that a powerful story right there? We'll break it down in just a second. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this morning, God. We thank you for this word, Father. Lord, I pray that today that you would touch your people, God. Lord, I thank you that this morning, Father God, that, that we will learn, Father God, from this scripture that you have provided us with today, God. We will grab a hold of it, Father God. And Lord, that, that there would be incredible, amazing healing things that take place in our lives, Father. So God, today, Lord, those that are sick, those that are hurting, those that are are broken, those that need a breakthrough, those that need a touch, Father. Will God, will you come today and touch your people, Father? We expect nothing less. Just as the lame man was laying there, and it says he was expecting something, God, today we are expecting you to do something powerful on our behalf, Lord. So, Father, right now we raise up our expectation. We stir up expectancy in this room, Father God, to grab a hold of, Father, to receive, Lord, what you have for us this morning. So, God, we thank you for it. We praise you today. And all God's people said, amen, amen, amen. amen. Listen, I, I, love, I love this scripture. This is a, a powerful story because we see that, obviously, healing took place, which is great. The power of God touched this lame man. There is so much incredible stuff that is that is wrapped up within this text. And, and you know, there's many different things, many different avenues and ways that we can preach on this, on this particular paragraph right here. And there's a lot of different things. In verse 2, it says that, that the lame man was, was, uh, was from birth, he was lame from birth, was carried there. So we could talk about how, you know, what's carrying you and all that kind of thing. Uh, you know, we, we, we can look at uh, where he had expectancy to receive. And, and he said, look at us. We can talk about your expectancy. There's so much that is in here that is wrapped up in these 10 verses. Uh, but before we dive into, into this text today, I, I must say this. I, I do not believe that the days of miracles and healings are over. Come on, do you believe that with me today? I, I do not believe that those days are are over. I, I posted on Facebook about what God has been doing in this church and how a few weeks ago we had some miraculous healings that took place uh, amongst our congregation. And I remember there was, a, there was a lady that reached out to me on Facebook and she said, are you really experiencing healing at your church? And I said, yes, we are. And she goes, oh my gosh, I didn't know that God still is doing that. And listen, like, like I, I, I want to help you this morning and then those that are also watching online, I want to tell you that that God is still in the healing business, like the same yesterday, today, and forever. And, and if, if he can heal the people like we just read about in the word, then my God, then he can heal you as well, amen? And I believe that Jesus still wants to heal people. It is not an impossibility to, to, to not receive a miracle, 
Okay, it is very possible. Remember, our God is the God of the impossible. So a doctor says, hey, this is your situation. This is what you're going to have to go through. This is the report. And God says, no, 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 that's not who I created them to be. Come on, somebody. They are healed because I bore that on the cross. Come on. And so we can walk in the healing power of Jesus today. We've been talking about this, that he didn't just die for your sins on the cross. Because that's what we like to focus on all the time. Well, Jesus died for my sin. Well, yes, he did. But it goes beyond that. He says, it says he also died for your affliction and your disease. Come on. And so it's beyond just the sin because, listen, we're all going to fall short in sin. That's what Romans says. But he also died for your affliction and your disease. Amen? So that, that affliction could be many different things. You could have different things going on. It could just be a broken heart, and that's afflicting your body. It's afflicting who you are. And my God says he is the healer of the broken heart. Come on, somebody. He is the healer of what? Whatever you may be going through, whatever you may be facing in your life. And so I believe that those days are not over yet. And I love the story of healing in Acts chapter 3. Because there are several things that, that really just jump out to me. Verse 1 says that they were going to the temple at the hour of prayer. At the hour of prayer. And it's really specific that it says this. And I, wanna, I want to teach you something because at this specific time is when they were called to go to the temple. Now, if for better lack of words, for today we'll say to the church, okay? It would be the church today. So they were called to go to the church at this specific time. Just like church starts at 10 o'clock and you come to church at 10 a.m. So this was something that was normal for them. It was the hour of prayer. It was the hour of worship. It was the hour to get into God's presence. And so that goes to show me immediately, like... They were in the right place at the right time. Come on, somebody, right? And, and, and it matters that you are in the right place at the right time. So in other words, it was the right time for God to do something. It was the right time for God to perform a miracle. All right, this wasn't just a random moment. Like God predestined this thing. He knew that the disciples, he sent the disciples to the temple, and he knew that there was going to be a man that would be laying there. They just so happened to be there at that time. And so it's, it's important that we understand that when God works, when he does things, when he performs a miracle, it's in the right place at the right time. Come on, somebody. And he will line all that up for us. You don't have to go searching and be like, God, is this the right time for you to do something in my life? No, no, he provides the space, he provides the moment, he provides the atmosphere, he provides the time, and he performs a miracle. In verse 3, it says that when, when he saw, when the, when the layman saw the disciples, he asked for help. Now, there's so much that, that we can pull out of just that verse alone. But he asked for help. So I, go, I, I start to think, like, okay, if he's been laying there for years, if he's been carried there for years and years for years, why, has he, why hasn't he asked for help yet, Right? And, and, and because I, I begin to realize that a lot of times when we're in the midst of our pain, when we're in the midst of our struggle, when we're in the midst of things that have been holding us down for X amount of time, whatever it is, it's not easy to ask for help. It's not easy to ask for prayer because we think that is who we are now. We think that that is who we have become. And so because, because we haven't seen anything different in our life, then all of a sudden our mouths are shut to ask to receive what God wants to do. And let me help you today. Day, whatever you go through, whatever you, you've been facing, whether it's been for 15 years, 20 years, 40 years, or even just the last week, if you would just ask, if you would just cry out to God for help, if you would just lift up your voice to heaven, I promise you, he will meet you there and meet your need. Amen? We shouldn't have to be like the lame man who lays there for years and years and years and suffers. Listen, God didn't create you to suffer. God didn't create you to be in misery. God didn't create you to be stuck in that pain. He didn't create you to be stuck in that problem or that situation or that circumstance. That is not who my God is. He is too good of a God. He is a God that delivers you. He is a God that heals you. He is a God that sets you free. He is a God that restores you. Amen. Come on, somebody. And so I don't believe as men and women of God that we have to sit in our suffering. You shouldn't have to. And for some of you that may be like, oh, my God, you don't understand. Like, this is what I've been going through. This is what I've been dealing with. But listen, I want to tell you, I want to tell you today that you don't belong there. You don't belong laying in that misery. You don't belong laying in that defeat. You don't belong laying in that pain. And just as the disciples walked up at the right time and it said he looked at them. Listen, I can tell you right now, 
when he looked up and saw them, he wasn't looking at them. He was looking at Jesus. Amen? He was looking at Jesus through them. And he knew that something was different about these two guys. These are not just two men that, that just are going to walk by me and like everybody else has all day for the last several years. These are different. And listen, I'm telling you, if you would just look, if you would just look up to heaven, say, God, I need you. Let me tell you, he's going to do it. He will absolutely do it. Come on, somebody say amen to that. So not only did God do something at the right place at the right time where you are matters, but I can also tell you today that you got to be looking at the right place. you got to be looking with your eyes in the right place. Verse 5 also says this. It says, then he looked at them and he was expecting. He was expecting. See, this goes to show me that if we would just raise our expect expectancy, we can receive what we believe. Amen? And, and he raised his expectancy in that moment. Imagine being there, suffering for all of these years, and all of a sudden he just had this urge to speak out and to look. And, and Because I believe that, that we can see. We can see it coming when God wants to do something. Thing. But we have got to raise our expectancy, amen? Listen, he wants that expectancy from you. He wants you to raise your expectancy. Because listen, when, when we raise our expectancy, let me tell you, the hand of God moves. It really does. Expectancy is powerful, amen? It's powerful. So I can, I can tell you today, if God is, is God, if God is big enough to create the universe, you better believe he's big enough to heal you. Come on, somebody. If my God is big enough to create the universe, place the stars in its place, do all of these things, create animals and create you and all these kind of things, let me tell you, he is a big enough God to heal you. Amen? And you need to know that today and you need to rest in that today because our God is a healing God. And if he is so powerful to create the earth that we are upon right now, like just think of all of the crazy stuff, like it's just the creation alone, how much power, creativity, wisdom, all of that went into that to create the universe, to create you and I. Let me, let me tell you, he is big enough to heal you, amen? He is big enough to heal you. A miracle means this. If you're taking notes today, this is what a miracle means. A supernatural intervention in the ordinary course of nature. A miracle. A supernatural intervention in the ordinary course of nature. So supernatural intervention. So that means it, it's supernatural. It comes from God, okay? It's an intervention, all right? So if you, I don't know if you've ever seen that, that, that show on, on TV, uh, Intervention, for those that are, are drug addicts and they come in and they, they get them there in front of the family and they have an intervention. It's like their moment, their time. They're either going to make things right in that moment or they're going to keep doing what they're doing, right? And, and so it's an intervention, okay? It's, it corrupts and changes everything in an ordinary course of nature. So in the ordinary, in the physical, in what we would see as the natural this is the way it's supposed to be. But it's an interruption of the supernatural power of God is what a miracle is. So God comes in with his supernatural power in your natural, ordinary situation, and he says, boom, let me do something for you. Come on, somebody. That's what, that's what a miracle is. A miracle is not the, the underdog that beats the other team in the Super Bowl. That's not a miracle. But we call it a miracle. We say, oh, that was a miracle. My God, they won. That is not a miracle. A miracle is when the supernatural, come on, invades the natural. Come on, somebody. And that is what a true miracle is. In the Hebrew, in the Hebrew, it means finger of God. Finger of God. Isn't that interesting? That, that's what it means in the, in the Hebrew. So a miracle is literally God touching you. God touching your life. God coming down, extending his hand and touching you. This is how I envision a miracle. If a miracle in the Hebrew means finger of God, we know that that's him touching us, right? And so I believe he comes down, man, with his righteous right hand and he just touches you. And look at the scripture. It says in the scripture that he reached out his right hand to pick him up. The same way God intervenes in our natural, ordinary situations, God supernaturally reaches down the finger of God with his righteous right hand and picks us up. Who is seated at the right hand of the Father? Jesus. So the power of Jesus, the power of God comes in, touches our life, touches our... Now, does that mean you're standing here and all of a sudden you feel this massive hand hit? No, no, no. 
That doesn't mean that. But it means that literally the hand of God is coming and it's touching you. Listen, that goes to show me you, you don't need someone else to touch you. You just need God. Come on, somebody. You, you don't need prophet so-and-so and this person and that person. No, no, you just need Jesus. Come on, somebody. You just need Jesus. One touch of G- from Jesus is all we need, amen? It's all we need. Now, I believe in laying on of hands and all that kind of stuff, and we, we see those things and we do those things, and I, I, totally, I totally believe in that. But listen, there are some times when I didn't even have to lay my hand on nobody and Jesus touched them. Because listen, so he, don't, he, just, he doesn't want, he doesn't need or want a person. He just wants and needs your faith hello he just needs your faith so when we raise up our faith and our expectancy man God comes down and he touches us amen all right so there's three things that I want to teach you out of this text today if you're taking notes there's three three steps to receive uh, your healing three steps to receive your healing again we're talking about the miracle of healing It's it's a supernatural miracle and the first one is this number one is position yourself position yourself now again Where you are, right place at the right time, all those things matter. So where you position yourself matters. Now, I want to talk to you a minute about this text because I want you to understand this, uh, what number one is all about. Position yourself. So the man was carried to the beautiful gate, and he was laid there year after year after year, okay? He spent a lot, many a days there, all right? It's interesting that he was carried to that particular gate in that particular place. It was actually the entrance of the temple itself. It was the very first gate that you would encounter. It was called Beautiful Gate because scholars actually believe it was completely surrounded with bronze and and all of this amazing and beautiful stuff. Thereafter, that gate may have lied somewhere between four to ten other gates before you actually got into the temple, the core of what the temple was in that day. So this was the very first gate. This is the very first thing that you see when you are entering into what we would say the presence of God. God, okay, entering into the house of God. And so he was laid there at that place. Now I, I love I love that 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 God just works all this out in the scripture. It's amazing. It's called beautiful gate. Beautiful gate. Why is it called beautiful gate? Because it was beautiful, right? We know that. That's pretty easy to understand. And so we see that that he was carried there and and, and placed in his situation in front of the gate, which was the entrance into the temple. So every single person had to walk by him. Every single person had to see him. There was no way that you denied the fact or didn't see that he was present in that place because you would have had to pass by him to get where you needed to go. All right? And so he's laid there. So he understood that if I'm going to be where someone will see me, I have got to be in this particular place. Now, they could have chose to take him. He could have chose, well, take me around the side wall and set me there. Or take me out into this place and put me there. But he knew years and years ago that if I would position myself right here, somebody will come along my path. Somebody will witness to me. Somebody Somebody will pray for me. Somebody will touch me if you will just lay me here. So listen, where you position yourself matters. So you have to position yourself to receive what God wants to do. If you're over here and like, oh, God, I don't know if you're going to do it, but I'm just here. You better believe that's not going to happen for you. But if you would position yourself, posture yourself in the right position, in the right place, let me tell you, man, God sees you. God sees you, so where you position yourself matters. He was carried to the same spot every day. And you would have thought that after some days, after some years, that he would have got up and picked a different place. But he didn't because he knew if I would go right here, this is where God wants me to be. If I would position myself right here, eventually one day, it might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, it might not be next year, but one day I will see the hand of God touch my body. And listen, he knew that. That was the expectancy that he had. That was what he was believing for. He could have picked up his bags and said, somebody carry me away, or he could have chose to never go back there again. But he knew that in that place, something was going to happen to me. Amen? Something. So truly where you position yourself matters. See, 
He was carried there every day. He was carried to the place of God's presence. And, and, and it's interesting because, you know, he could have chose anywhere else in the city to be, but he chose to be in the presence. <laughs> Hello? Uh, that, that matters. Like, you, you can choose to, to, to seek other directions and go other, th- other ways, but let me tell you, you're not going to find your answer there. Where you find your answer is in the presence of the Lord. Amen? It's in the presence of God. And he knew that. He knew that. And here's what I come to discover. That the right place... The right word and the right time will always equal a miracle. But it's about where you position yourself. Right place, right time, and the right word will always equal a miracle. Amen? So again, number one is position yourself. Number two is this. Stay ready. Stay ready. You have got to stay ready. You have got to stay believing. You have got to stay expecting. Amen? I love this. I'm so glad that he was looking for a touch. Amen? He was looking for a touch. He, 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 wasn't, he wasn't looking for anything else other than the touch. A, a, normal, a normal lame man or a normal person in disease in that day and age would have only been focused on receiving money. But he was focused on receiving a touch. And that is exactly why Peter and John recognized it. And Peter said, silver and gold I don't have. But what I do have is the very thing that you are looking for. So let me give that to you. Because what you don't need is my silver. And what you don't need is my gold. Come on, somebody. Am I speaking to someone today? What you don't need is that answer or this person or that thing. But what you do need is Jesus. Amen? That is what we do need. And so don't wait. Don't wait for someone else to see you. Just look for Jesus. Amen? Just look for Jesus. The disciples uh, would, have, would, have, would have just passed him up just like they may have done already many times before. I would assume that the, those, even those two particular disciples probably passed by him many a times already over the course of time. And they probably did do that. But something was different about this day. Something was different about this time. Because they saw the need, and they they saw that they needed to do something about the man. This is how they saw that they needed to do something. They saw the need because he saw them. He saw them. This is what scholars believe. Scholars believe that in that day and age, if you were a beggar, if you were diseased, if you were lame, whatever it may be, and you looked like this man and you were laying there, that you would not, it would be disrespectful, you would not look up into the eyes of anybody. Because if, you, if they looked at you, they could potentially get what you have. And so it was uncommon, it was, not, it was not normal for them to look up and to acknowledge somebody's presence in the midst of them. So something was different about this day. Something was different about this time. Because it says in the scripture, he looked up and saw them. And they saw him. Amen? They saw him. And so listen, when when you see a need, when you see a need in someone else's life or whatever it may be, when you see a need, it's time to release a seed. Amen? Now, I know that sounds, sounds cute, but it's, it's real. When, when you see a need, it's time to release a seed. Amen? It's time to release something when you see a need. And so the layman's expectancy was the breeding ground for his miracle. I truly believe that. It was the breeding ground for his miracle. He was ready to receive what they had to offer. They had to offer something to him, and so he was ready to receive that. So listen, I want to tell you this in love, but if all you do is moan and groan and hide in your sickness and pain, you ain't going to ever receive. If all you do is lay there and say, woe is me, if all you ever do is lay there and say, this ain't going to ever happen, but I'll, you know, whatever, I'll just keep trusting. I'll just keep believing. And we have that kind of attitude, we have that kind of faith, then let me tell you, you're not going to receive. I'm sorry. And I'm telling you that in love, but, it, but it's, it's honest to God truth. You're not going to receive if all you do is look at your misery. You're not going to receive if all you ever do is look at your pain. You're not going to receive if all you ever do is look at your situation and your circumstance. Because let me tell you, everybody else around you is going through something too. Hello. And so if you want to be bound to that thing, then keep looking at it. But if you want to be set free, then look up to Jesus. Come on, somebody. 
Look up, look up, look up. And so if you stay ready and you're always looking and you're full of expectancy, you better know that healing belongs to you. Amen? You better know that. If you stay ready, you're always looking, you're full of expectancy, you better know that healing belongs to you. Amen? All right, so number one, again, position yourself. Number two, stay ready. And number three is this, Isaac. Proclaim and receive. Proclaim and receive. So Peter and John, they didn't force the man to get up, despise what you may think. They said, in the name of Jesus, get up. Now, they could have just said, get up. But it wasn't like that. Notice whose name they mentioned first. In the name of Jesus, you get up. You get up. So what the disciples did is is something that they understood. Is that if I would just simply proclaim the name of Jesus... Come on. He's activated in that moment, and he will receive. Now, they could have said, all right, man, get up. Let's pray for you, or, or whatever it may have been, okay? But they knew that the only way he was going to receive is if they proclaimed the name of Jesus. Because the name of Jesus is power. Jesus, the name of Jesus is healing. The, the, the name of Jesus is breakthrough. And, and, and listen, they didn't even have to call out his problem. They just said, get up. Because they didn't have to call out what was holding him down. They just had to say Jesus to lift him up. Okay? So Jesus has the power and the ability to come in and pick you up, whatever that may look like in your life, pick you up. A lot of people say, well... If I can just have a pastor pray for me, if I, if I can just do this, if I can just do that, no. You don't need to do anything. You don't need another person. You, you don't need the most powerful intercessor. You don't need a doctor. You don't, you don't need none of that. You just need Jesus. At, just at the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus. 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 So the truth is, healings will always follow proclamation of the name of Jesus. I've come to discover that. And just saying the name of Jesus, man, you better know that healing is present. Healing is there. Because the second Jesus is released is the second healing is received. Amen? The second Jesus is released is the second that healing is received. Now notice that they didn't just release the healing and walk away. They told him to get up. Why is that? There's several things here. They tested the miracle. They wanted to know before they walked away that this guy was healed. Let me tell you, like, when we pray for people, when we lay our hands on people, when we believe for healing, you'll probably know if you've been around us long enough, like, we test out the healing. Not that we don't believe God didn't do it, but we believe that we want to see it because when we see it and when others see it, it increases the faith, right? It increases the, the, the faith of those around us. So you, I may pray for your, your messed up back, and, I, and, and before I move on to the next person, okay, test it out. Oh, yeah, that's good. Okay, it's done. Like, I know it's completed, and then everybody else around sees. And you know for yourself, you just did something that you couldn't do before. And so that's exactly what the disciples understood, because they could have reached out their hand and prayed for them and, believe, and prayed for him and believed for the miracle, and they could have walked away. But what good would it have been if the man who couldn't walk didn't get up and walk, right? And so they picked him up. They told him, stand up. They stood him up so that they can see that the miracle had taken place. And notice as soon as he stood up, he began to rejoice. 
He began to jump up and down. He began to run around. He went from that place of, in front of that gate, and he started running back to the back of the temple. He passed by all those people who had just passed by him, and he's jumping up and down, and he's rejoicing, and he's probably saying stuff like, look at me, look at me, I'm healed, and all these kind of things. And people are like, oh my God, that's the dude that was just sitting there. That's the guy that I passed by every single day. What is going on? And it raised the faith. It raised the excitement of everybody that was there that day. So it's important that as we pray and as we minister healing and as we receive healing, that we test out the miracle. And again, it's not to question God's ability, but it's to prove God's existence. Amen? Come on, somebody. So, like, healing 101. Declare, pray, test, rejoice. It's exactly what we discovered here. We see that this is exactly how this story went, took place. Declared, they proclaimed the name of Jesus. They pray, they tested it out, they said, get up. And then he rejoiced. And not only did he rejoice, but everybody else rejoiced with him. Amen? Because it's exciting when someone gets healed. Amen? It's so exciting. You know, I'm mindful of a story. I just want to share this story with you real quick to increase your faith. The summer before last, I was in New Mexico. And we were holding services there. And I was preaching on probably something along the lines of the Holy Spirit or healing or something. And uh, we had been there for several days and had great, amazing services. It was really, really awesome. And uh, God was doing incredible things. And there was, there was a family that had heard that we were there. And they had this little girl, and she was probably, she wasn't, I mean, she was maybe not even, well, she was like a year and a half, I think. Somewhere along the way, like 18 months, 20, something, something along there. But anyways, so they, they travel like several hours to get to where we are. It's a true story true story. They're friends on my Facebook, so I'm not lying about this. So they traveled all the way to where we were because their the daughter, the, the little girl, the 18-month-old, she couldn't walk. She couldn't talk. Something happened during childbirth that caused some sort of neurological issue. And so just like, you know, how a baby will, will lay there and they'll kick their legs and they'll do all couldn't even do any of that. Just limp. Just completely limp. It was real sad. There's no reason in the world for someone to have to live like that and be like that, right? We know, of course, if you have, if you have kiddos in here, you know that that's like, man, you would never want that for your child or for anybody else's child for that matter. But so limp, just completely limp, couldn't speak, really couldn't even focus her eyes on you. None of that. She just had a lot of issues. So they travel several hours all the way to our service that night. And I'm preaching and all this. And, and uh, so we, we make the altar call and things are happening. God's moving. It's powerful. And they come up to me and they share with me something along the lines of what I just shared with you. Told me all the issues that was with, wrong with the little girl. And uh, the mother and the grandmother had brought her. And I said, well, I believe God can heal this little girl tonight. Do you believe that? You know, they're crying. They're like, yeah. Believe it. And I said, no, no, no. I said, do you really believe that God can touch your little girl? Well, yeah, I, I, I think he can. I mean, this is what the doctor, no, no, no. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what she's being diagnosed with. I, I don't care the way she looks right now. Do you believe that she can be healed? Because here's the thing. I couldn't ask the little girl who's 18 months old. She wouldn't understand what I'm saying anyways. So her healing really depended on mommy. Does mommy have enough faith for baby? So I asked her and asked her, and finally she got to the point where, yes, I believe. It took a while, but we finally got there. 
So I said, okay, we're going to pray. So we gather everybody together. I got on the mic, and I'm standing in the middle of the stage like this. I'm explaining to everybody what's going on. They're standing right over on the side. I said, we are going to see this little girl get healed. We are going to see this girl talk. We are going to see this girl walk around and run around before we leave here tonight. And listen, they would, they would, they would hold her, literally. And, and I got her. I was holding her. And you put her feet to the ground and just, like, I mean, couldn't even stand. Like, there's no chance. And so I said, we are going to see this little girl get healed. Do you all believe it? And everybody say yes, and we're, we're praying all together. And, and, and I have it on video. It's incredible. It's in my phone. But we're praying for this little girl, and we're praying, we're praying. And, I mean, it's powerful prayers, y'all. It's like like heavy, like strong spiritual warfare prayers. You know, this was, wasn't like, Lord, just heal her. God, if it's your will, just touch her body right now. No, no. Like, that's baloney. It's like, in Jesus' name. We proclaim healing over her body. And so we're praying and praying and praying. Next thing you know, she's like twitching and all this kind of stuff. And she starts kicking her legs and all that. And I can sense the power of God is touching her body. And she's looking around. And, 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 and to be completely honest, in the moment, she was kind of scared because, you know, here's a whole bunch of people yelling in her face, okay? But at the same time, you could see that God was doing something. And before you know it, she's like, uh, 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 you know, like trying to say something, trying to, she had never done that before. And God began to move, and, and I, I told the mother, I said, I want you to put her on the floor. So she grabbed her by the arms, and she put her down, and that little girl put her feet down. And I said, I promise you, this little girl's going to get healed right now. And people are going nuts. It's going crazy in the place. I said, we're going to keep praying. We're going to keep praying. And before you know it, it went from not being able to stand. She went from being able to be able to stand. And God began to move. And, and I said, okay, you know, the normal baby would have already been walking at this point. The normal baby would have already been talking, saying words. It, it, we've got to move forward. We, this got, something's got to happen. And so let, let me tell you, we kept believing and praying. And I got out in front of her, and I kept calling her. I think her name was Naya. I kept calling her by the name. I said, come on, baby, walk towards me. Come on, in Jesus' name. And would you know that she went like this, and she picked up her leg, and she put it down. And Mommy was just holding her hands, and then she picked up the leg, and she put it down. And before you know it, she was able to walk all all the way over to me and by the end of the night let me tell you this is a powerful story by the end of the night she didn't need help anymore because God touched her and let me tell you that was just like not even two years ago and if God can touch a child and God can heal a baby like that when the baby doesn't even understand what's going on, the baby doesn't even know what faith is or have faith in that moment. If God can touch a child through the hands of others and through the faith of other people around, let me tell you, you better believe that God can touch you today. Come on, somebody. My God still wants to heal. And the problem, much like the amazing lady that reached out to me, she said, well, my church doesn't operate in healing anymore. They, they've, they, they've gone away from that. It doesn't, so she didn't even know it existed anymore. Imagine how many believers, how many people that are out there that are lost because they don't even realize that, that God still wants to do those things today. Like, he doesn't want you bound. He doesn't want you sick. He doesn't want you defeated. He doesn't want you in that pain. God still wants to touch people today. And let me tell you, this church, I can't speak for anybody else. And I love the church. I love every church. I am for the church. I will partner with any church. I will love any pastor. I'm for the church no matter what they do. But let me tell you, this church, we will see healing. This church, we will believe in the hand of God. This church will be known as a church of miracles. Come on, somebody. And it's not to lift up my name. It's not to, so that we sound great or anything like that. I don't care about that. It's so that the name of Jesus can be glorified. Come on. The name of Jesus. Amen. Stand up with you, on your feet all across the room with me.